Hello and welcome to my channel where we talk about migraines, the science behind it, how stupid they are and how it is to live with them. So today I'll talk about triggers and how knowing what your own triggers are can help you better coexist with your migraines. So how this works is that some sort of a factor occurs which in turn triggers the outbreak of a migraine and it is these factors that are known as triggers. As opposed to a headache which is caused by swelling of blood vessels in the brain, the cause of a migraine is not yet known. So several sources have been and are working actively towards finding a cause but have yet to succeed which is kind of weird. I've heard that we know more about space than we do about the human brain which is kind of weird to think about when you know space is way up there and we are way down here. Anyways. There are a lot of studies and trials working towards finding a cause, but as of right now there are a small amount of plausible theories floating around and here are some of them. Theory number one is that migraines can be due to abnormal activity in the brain and this is the overall theory that I see and I think that it kind of works as an umbrella for the rest of the theories and thoughts around migraines. Second theory is that migraines are due to nerves communicating differently in the brain and this also builds on the theory about abnormal activities in the brain but it also stands alone as an independent theory. Third theory is that they can occur due to changes in chemicals and blood vessels in the brain. So for migraine nerves, which is the medical term used for those suffering from migraines or so I've heard, for them the brain is thought to have a chemical balance that differs from those not suffering from migraines. And the fourth theory that is kind of weird but very convincing is that migraineurs have a higher count of nitrate reducing microbes in the mouth. So this study basically compared migraineurs to non-migraineurs and found that there were differences between the two groups that were significant. And of course I will link to studies and research papers down below so if you're interested in those just go check them out. But Watch this video first, it takes the shortest amount of time. So since there is so far is not one exact cause of migraines figured out, they can be very difficult to both treat and to prevent. And most medicines come with tryptanes that stimulate serotonin and that in turn reduces swelling and inflammation in the brain. And this works good in most cases, but it does not address the root of the problem. And this is where triggers are introduced. So triggers are basically everything that is bad for a person in general, so it's a bit vague. But if you suffer from migraines and you do your best to avoid your own triggers, then it might lead to an overall less amount of attacks. The following triggers are thought to set off migraines and they can be divided into factors, which then again can be divided into sections. So we have the following factors. Hormonal, emotional, physical, dietary, medicational, and environmental. Hormonal factors occur mainly in women and are due to menstrual cycle and hormonal changes, which can be perimenopause, menopause, and pregnancy. And it also can be due to puberty, which then applies to both genders. Emotional factors include stress, anxiety, depression, excitement, and shock, which all have a negative effect on migraines. Physical factors are tiredness and insufficient sleep, which includes both extremities of sleep, like too much or too little. Other physical factors are tension in the shoulders or the head, poor posture, physical overexertion, low blood sugar or jet lag. Dietary factors include a sensitivity towards alcohol or caffeine, irregular meals, dehydration or certain foods. These foods can, among others, be chocolate, cheese, citrus fruits, and other foods containing the additive thiamine. Medical factors include some sleeping pills, the combined contraceptive pill and HRT medication, which is short for hormonal replacement therapy medication. Environmental factors are flickering screens, strong smells, secondhand smoke, loud noises, bright lights, stuffy rooms, and temperature changes which all are inevitable if you either work, go to school, or otherwise want to function like a normal human being. 
So now that we know what the most common triggers for a migraine is, how do you go about to figure out what your own triggers are? People don't usually react to the same factors and their triggers are therefore not the same. And this is where tracking your migraines is a great tool for figuring out your triggers. I would say that there is two main ways of tracking triggers. The first one is that you can use an app or you can write it down. And there are a lot of apps geared towards migraines and how to track them. And you just have to find out which one is your own favorite. My personal favorites are Migraine Buddy and Manage My Pain. Now I also recommend Clue since you can customize your own tabs here. Now this is basically not what Clue is made for. If you're a woman you're probably well aware of what Clue is, but for those who don't know it is an app that is made for tracking your menstrual cycle and to track fertility. But it has a lot of other things you can track as well such as stress levels, um, bodily functions and all that jazz. So. In addition to tracking my headaches in Clue, I would also put a note in my phone calendar which states the degree of the pain and if there were anything that stood out in particular that day. So for example, if you're stressed, if you have been eating something that you normally don't or any other factors like I mentioned before, these can be put in, in your uh, phone calendar. And you also have the option to write it all down either in your journal or by using a form. So if you want to use the form, I will link one down below or you can just Google it. They generally look like this and you write down everything that you normally would plot into an app. So degree of pain, if there were any factors that stood out throughout your day and so on and so forth. And some days there might be not one certain factor that stand out and other days there might be plenty. The main goal, however, is to find one or a couple of factors and treat those as your triggers to see if this lessens the occurrences of the migraines. And this is not done overnight. It is a long process with a lot of trial and error. But I think it is better to invest a little bit of extra time in figuring out your triggers than just stuffing your body full of medicine to treat something that could be treated otherwise. But do not get me wrong, I am all for taking painkillers if you are in pain. But I also think that it is important to invest some time in figuring out why you are in pain in the first place. And this does not only apply to migraines, but to other pains as well, and it is just my opinion. When I went to see my doctor for help when my migraines were really bad a couple of years ago, tracking my migraines and figuring out what my triggers were, were the first thing I was told to do. I did this for three months, then I came back and we reviewed the data, the doctor did some adjustments to my prescriptions and gave me some pointers based on the triggers that I reported, and I eventually went on to go and track my migraines for another three months. So I would definitely say that this works, and I would strongly recommend you to try it if you do not have an underlying illness that is the direct cause for your migraines. Especially recommended if you are taking a lot of painkillers and cannot seem to find anything else that works for you. I also plan on making a video on how to utilize the knowledge that you get from knowing what your triggers are. So if that is something that you would like to see, please let me know. I hope that you can take something from this video and that it can help you if you struggle with migraines. Thank you so much for watching all through. I know this was a lot, but it is equally as important. Please remember to be kind to yourself and to those around you and I will see you in the next one. Bye!